Marcelo invited me a year ago. Uh, I promised to do a paper, and uh, and it was no wedge, no keynote. I think immediately that probably came up when he was finding out that there might not be a paper. I've tried everything to write a paper, and uh, like everyone, found uh, thousands of excuses to have better things to do, or other things to do, or less interesting things to do. But uh, in my case, and not like with many other people, it really led to writing no paper. <laughs> and this is really a problem. I'm still a little bit institutional, but uh, you know, there's all these people in the field, like Steina Fazulka, Korsuki, Nick Collins, uh, many, many other people, Gottfried Willem Raams, uh, Charles Rému, of Rému um, whoever, that are not writing at all, or just a little bit. And they really should be known. I still made it here tonight, but there's a lot of people that, that should be somewhere in the future included in this meeting, because they did incredible work in the past. They invented a lot of things that a lot of people work on, and I think it should be really good if all of them started writing. And to give a good example, uh, I will not write. I've been convinced by some other people that, uh, which still makes me responsible for what I'm doing, but uh, to at least show some slides. And um, so this is the first time I operate a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> So, this is the first slide, and this is the second one. <laughs> you see on the left, uh, my brother René playing a trumpet, and you see me uh, playing a piano that we demolished. And uh, what you don't see in the picture is that there's uh, also lots of little microphones and electromagnetic pickups that we used on the strings. This was done at our parents' house, and with, not with really the liking of our parents uh, destroying the piano, of course. <laughs> And this is one of the first public events where um, my brother is not visible, but I'm not playing the piano as a sound instrument, but I'm playing the trombone. This is really one of the rare moments where you can see me play a real instrument, which I didn't really master. This is actually the, one of the first instruments that I built and performed with. Uh, I was very happy uh, after a long period of experiments with uh, electronic music devices or electronic devices that Dick Reimarkers of the Conservatory in The Hague allowed me to work in the studio, the electronic music studio, uh, which now has become the Institute of Sonology. It was really a traditional tape uh, studio, and I worked there so in the mid-60s, and, and made a lot of tapes, and I really loved working in the studio with the concentration and good sound, and being able to walk out, not having to perform, and all the stuff like that. But then, indeed, what would you do with those tapes? Play them for friends, or and uh, like give a concert, which was done, and that to me didn't sound very appealing. And so what I did, I made tape loops. And what you see is an instrument with two similar tape loops, which I'm manipulating. So basically, I'm I'm the tape with the playback machine. I like with, with I had two similar loops and pedals that allowed me to uh, arrange that I could really with synchronous movements make a continuous sound of a little bit of those uh, tape loops and then gradually move through the piece. Also, also you see some recorders that were doing loops. So basically what I was doing now with digital technology is what I was doing then with analog technology. So not much has changed in my case, which I'm very proud of. Um, this is an experiment to, to touch electronics. I discovered quite often that if you would like open a, an oscillator, an old-fashioned laboratory generator or whatever, that it was quite nice to touch the circuitry. I like the little shots, not the big ones, but also the influence that you could have on the sound was really nice. And so what you see here is a board which contains small print boards with small uh, op amps and like little circuits that you can influence by basically becoming a part of that circuit by touching it with your skin, which is a conductor. So you were being a wire and a potential meter at the same time. So this was the first cracker box probably built in 68, 69. I was uh, very young and teaching, which was possible in the Netherlands at that time with a very liberal art school climate. And here you see a little class demonstrating, um, to begin with, this is the uh, theremin box that my father built. And uh, it's being played live here. 
And these two people are making a connection with their hands and playing crackle boxes, as you see. And there's a little condenser that he has his knee on, which was basically a two foley's and a, and a dustbin back in between, which was, of course, a perfect condenser and influenced one of the oscillating circuits inside. Um, this is uh, also a performance uh, where you, uh, with the tapes and with the, the, that early synthesizer and with the puppy synthesizer. That was an, an early uh, electronic synthesizer from a uh, British person, Peter Zinoviev, that I modified, also by allowing me to touch the circuit board by bringing all the contacts to the front. Here you see me again playing uh, the, the condenser of the, the, the crackle synthesizer on the ground with a hand organ in the back, and, uh, which was one of the first Stein instruments. At this moment I had entered Stein as a client and was borrowing the Hammond organ. And as you see here, you have the, the modified puppy synthesizer with my fingers on the little boards there. And uh, there is the crackle synthesizer, should be there, but I don't see it now. Um, and I was using some tones of the Hammond organ. Well, of course, all this uh, also led to theatrical experiments, because a lot of this uh, moving on stage with, with electronics really invited to do acts. And here I'm, I'm in a piece with bassist, bass player and composer uh, Martin Altena with all kinds of fake electronic devices, with a modified puppy, with a candle that you can blow to light the lights, and old TVs were making noises and, you know, the stuff that is still popular in art school these days. <laughs> um, this is really the first crackle box built at Stein in a PVC tube. So, I saw that there's these kind of um, plumber's fittings are still used to blow in and we used it to make our first cracker box in. Very good material. And this is the cracker box, how it was produced, like we could say mass produced, because it was an instrument that we sold like about 4,000. Just, and you touch it and uh, it got very popular and uh, traveled all over the world. And I heard Tom Lupla even had one during the first time came that I went to the States, so I was really surprised it traveled so fast. This actually was a, 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 the first crackle synthesizer, which consisted of three different uh, crackle boxes uh, arranged next to each other, but with, with possibilities to connect them between each other. So a modulation was possible by putting hands on and fingers on patches, on solar patches, that would you know, connect you electronically with the system. Also, it had keys, so there was a possibility of doing melodic work, which was uh, really new at that time in our electronic scene and not uh, appreciated by the old uh, avant-garde, uh, modernist uh, scene around. Uh, you also see that it's a battery-operated uh, system with its own loudspeaker, so it was standing on a stand and you could move it around and play outside. And also, I, I sometimes would carry it around my shoulder and play in front of me with a loudspeaker on my back so you could really move around, which is nice. Playing with other uh, musicians, which, which I did at that time um, in, in the Dutch uh, free improvised scene that started uh, in the mid-60s. I played with some of them during two, three years, um, uh, around uh, 69, 70, 71. This is looking inside the box. This is the only picture I could find, but you don't see the batteries. Uh, this is actually the, uh, in, in, on the MERS festival. It was one of the first big uh, open air festivals for new music. You see the modified puppy and uh, the crackle synthesizer. This was with a big group of, uh, I think, Willem Blöcker and Misha Mengelberg, if I remember well. I made one record and uh, that was recorded at the Filkingen studio in Stockholm. And you see here the setup for the record. So you see the crackle box with the wire to, uh, to a little loudspeaker at that time that was put in a separate room with one microphone in front because I really wanted that cheap loudspeaker sound. The record is called Crackle. And 